from Personal Journal, the column ROI by Brett Ahrens. The title of today's column, AT&T Pricing Move Offers Hope for Telecom Stock. If anyone is wondering why AT&T is making big changes to its iPhone and iPad data plans, look no further than a chart of the performance of AT&T and Apple stock since the iPhone was first unveiled in January 2007. Apple stock price has increased nearly threefold, while AT&T's has stayed flat or slightly declined. Enough said. The question isn't why AT&T is raising prices for data hogs, but why it waited so long. AT&T was so caught up in the iPhone mania that it gave away the store. The company pays Apple a subsidy of several hundred dollars for each new iPhone. Then it undercharged for the data service. The results weren't pretty. iPhones also jammed the network so badly that customers started complaining about the service. Ironically, those customers blamed the networks and exempted Apple. Now they'll probably blame the networks for raising prices. We live in a wireless and connected world. And yet the mobile companies have proven poor investments for years. Partly that's because so many of them also have legacy landline businesses that continue to erode. And it's partly because they have had, or exercised, little pricing power. AT&T is moving from an all-you-can-eat data structure to one where the people who consume the most network pay more. If this is an opening salvo for the industry as a whole, it should be bullish. Telecom shares here and worldwide look inexpensive by many measures. They are not without risk, of course, but many have huge dividend yields. AT&T and Verizon both yield nearly 7%. Overseas rivals also look attractive. Vodafone yields about 6%. Spain's Telefonica, 6.5%. New Zealand Telecom, if one is minded to look that far afield, pays 11%. If you have an online brokerage account, you may even be able to buy them from your iPhone without leaving the pool. There's an app for that. Thanks for listening to The Wall Street Journal for Friday, June 4th, 2010.